without further ado, I'd like to turn the floor over to Dr. Zapala, who will be running us through the program. This is a 20 minute program that is essentially a warm up for your athletes to get ready to play, both in, in match and in practice. And not only does it warm them up, but it actually kind of uh, activates, if you will, uh, all the proper muscles to stabilize the hips and their pelvis. So uh, this is something that FIFA is obviously branded and is behind. Most injuries that we see out there uh, are usually lower extremities, knees, ankles, that type of thing. Uh, and this program is aimed at targeting muscles that protect those areas. So, okay, so the first exercise is basically just straight ahead running. Uh, we, look at, we look at the athlete as they're running down the pitch at a very controlled pace. And what we're looking for here is we want to make sure the knee and the ankle and the hip are all in one line there. That's all we're looking for there. Uh, we want to make sure as they land, I call it running with a purpose, running with intention. Uh, you want your core activated, you want your core engaged. You don't want to run uh, kind of soft. You don't want to just kind of fall into the ground. You want to actually use your core to stabilize your legs as you land. And so this is just a, the first little bit of the warm up to kind of watch how the athletes move. The next phase gets into warming up the hips. So this one's called hip out. And if you watch, as the athletes go to move, they're going to plant, stabilize, and then they're going to lift one leg, and they're going to lift it up, and they're going to lift it out. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for them to control that motion with their core stabilizers. I don't want to see somebody lean away, lift their hip this way, they cross their leg this way, and cheat and kind of come across the line and use momentum to lift the leg. They're not actually using their core. The next one's going to be the opposite of that. Now the hip's going to come the other direction, looking for the exact same thing, looking for pelvic alignment. We're looking for that good core stability so they can move this leg with intention, making sure that when they go to lift that leg, that their core is doing all the work and they're keeping their head, their shoulders, their hips are level. They're doing it with their midsection and not just flipping their leg around. All right, the next one is going to be circling your partner. Here's where we first bring in lateral stability, okay? So the athlete's going to kind of start, you know, run to the first cone, and then they're going to go sideways, keeping their legs wide, stop, change direction, circle, and go back the other direction. What's really important is that when an athlete moves laterally, that they maintain pelvic stability and they maintain the distance between the legs. So what I don't want to see is they bring their legs together and then lean as they lift their leg. I want to see them be able to keep their legs apart and move laterally, right? All right, the next one is going to be a very similar activity, a very similar action, except now we're going to add explosion to the lateral movements. Now we're going to, now we're going to come off to the middle, and now we're going to shoulder bump our, our, our teammate. Uh, the one thing they don't mention in the video, if you guys go home and check this out, uh, they do the same side. They don't make the athletes switch. I encourage you to make them switch sides after that so that they're actually using the other leg. Next one. Now we're going to do quick forwards and backwards sprints. So now we're going to pick the pace up a little bit, and we're going to do more stopping and starting in the sagittal planes. And then what we're looking for here is as they change directions now, we're looking for the nice low center of gravity. We're looking to see if those knees cave in, dropping their hips back, change directions, and move back in the other direction. Okay? Deceleration is something you have to prepare for and plan for. And proper execution of deceleration is actually harder than acceleration. You use twice the muscles decelerating as you, as you do accelerating. So it's really important when you load the body in a decelerating or eccentric phase that you really pay attention to form. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears. That's basically the, the beginning part of the warm up. The next part goes to more core stability and strengthening. So I encourage you when, when athletes are doing what the, what the Europeans call a bench or a plank, that it's really critical that they activate their legs more. They're talking about wanting a straight line here, and, and that's exactly what we're looking for, but look at how, how much below that his knees are. He's got quite a bit of bend here. I'd like to see more energy or activation into the legs where you're trying to really straighten your legs and either push your legs out or together so you're actually activating your legs. That's gonna turn your pelvis on more. These exercises, this particular section, has three levels. So there's gonna be Six, six or so exercises in here, but each one has three levels, and the progression of that is something that we'll discuss here at the end of this section of how do you progress your athletes, because there's gonna be some choices there, but this is what you would do when the athlete feels, or you as coaches feel, that they've progressed and they're ready to move on. Um, they've heard, well, they're able to do three sets, 20 seconds, not a problem, and maintain their form. Now we're gonna take one of their legs off the ground and challenge their stability. 
The next version beyond this is going to be where you hold one leg. So you're doing the same thing we just showed you, but you're actually holding that leg, you're not just alternating. Uh, again, we're looking for the same alignment, elbow, shoulder, and we're looking for control there. I don't really care how high the leg goes. I think the problem with this exercise can be if you raise the leg too high, you tend to get extension to the spine. I really just want the leg off the ground. I don't care if it's an inch. Just as long as their core is doing the work, I think excessive elevation of that foot is going to lead to uh, someone kicking their back and turning the core off. Okay, so now we're going to go into the progressions for the, uh, the side plank. Okay, this is, this is the, uh, we're going to work on the lateral stabilizers or the external hip rotators. So he's actually working this bottom level here. He's actually working his external release there. Uh, this is the first progression where the bottom leg actually stays on the ground. Uh, and then of course you do this on both sides. We want to see, we want to see balance in our athletes. So the next one's going to be a progression of that. Uh, we're going to have both legs off the ground. We're going to be moving back and forth and raising and lowering our hips. Again, uh, this is something that requires a lot of strength and stability in your external obliques. And if someone's not ready for this, what you're going to see is you're going to see them kind of round their body. They're not going to be able to maintain that alignment and they're not going to be getting up off the ground. They're going to be sagging like that even though they're trying to be at the top of the motion. So this is the first progression of that exercise. And again, that's only warranted once they've mastered the first one. Then third progression, when you're really good and you can hold that side plank three sets, you know, 20 to 30 seconds at a time, now you're able to dynamically stabilize while you're moving your legs. So now he's got to use his external oblique and stabilize that moving leg at the same time. That's a pretty challenging exercise. I want to pause and talk a little bit about hamstrings. Hamstrings are commonly pulled, they're commonly injured. They're one of the most difficult things in sports medicine for us to rehab. They're, they're really tricky, they're finicky, they're large muscles, there's three of them back there, and they attach to the pelvis and they attach to the knee. The problem is, when your athletes are running around and changing directions, when they get tired, they tend to overuse their hamstrings and their backs. And that's why you see so many hamstring injuries. You don't really see too many blood injuries. Who, who out there tears their butt muscle playing sports? They tear their hamstrings, right? So I was really happy to see this exercise included in the program. As the one athlete is holding her down, she's gonna roll forward like that. Now she's fighting that with every, every fiber of her legs, trying not to break her nose on the pitch. And at the last minute, she's gonna throw her hands down. What we're looking for here, really good shoulder, hip, and knee alignment as she falls forward, and at the last minute she'll uncoil and she'll put her hands down. The, the beginning phase is three to five repetitions, one set, that's it, and you're done, move on. The second iteration, the intermediate uh, version of it is seven to 10 repetitions, and the advanced is 12 to 15. When they can do 12 to 15 very comfortably, you've got some pretty good strong hamstrings, and you're probably not gonna have a problem with that athlete injuring their hamstrings. <laughs> And then here we go, we're gonna go into some single leg stuff now, which is really important. You know, we all, uh, everything we do in life, you're on one leg most of the time, except we don't train that way very often. So what she's gonna do here, and it's really important that we also stick our hips out here, as opposed to most single leg exercises that you're taught, you have a straight leg. In this particular instance, they want your hip out a little bit. So notice how she's got her hip back a little bit and a soft knee. We don't have a solid straight leg. Uh, that is to make sure that you engage your pelvis, engage your abdominal area. And again, we're looking for a nice alignment from the front. You don't want to see that knee cave in. And then this is where we start making it more dynamic. We start, making, we start adding some motion to it. You're going to do it with a partner and you're going to throw the ball back and forth. Uh, generally, this is a great exercise. Uh, I, would, I would suggest that you, in the beginning, just try to, try to toss the ball where it's easiest to catch the ball. As your athletes get good at this, make it difficult. Make them catch it down below, make them catch it over their head. Change it up a little bit. Make them have to lean to the side because it makes them have to be more stable to move off their center like that. And then here you are where they're trying to push each other off of balance and they're actually not fighting there. Uh, they're just trying to just try to tip each other over essentially and they'll, tr they'll almost lose their balance and then they'll recover. Uh, this, gets, this gets pretty fun where they have to push each other around, right? And then we go into squats. Okay, so this one, we actually had the most trouble with this morning out there with the girls. Um, this really is, becomes more, it's the beginnings of something explosive. And if you notice, when she's squatting down, the first thing that she does is she wants to push her hips backwards, which is what you're looking for, the hips to come back. And as a result of the hips coming back, the knees are gonna bend automatically. As they come up, the other thing you're going to see, the other error they're going to make is as they come out of that position, they're going to want to either 
arch their back to stand up on their toes. They're going to want to come forward. Really important as they come up, as they all you're trying to do is move that pelvis forward as they come up onto the toes. So now you guys have all you're all familiar with walking lunges. Uh, go ahead and pause that right when she's down at the bottom there. What we look for in lunging is the books all say you know you want your knee behind your toe. That's great. It's a good way to do it, but you're still going to get a lot of activation in the thigh. When we have our athletes lunge, we're, we're really picky about making sure that the knee is literally right over the ankle. I want to see that tibia bone, absolute straight line. I don't want to see the knee in front here. I'm still behind my toe, but I've got more activation now into my thigh. Okay, now we get into some really advanced stuff, one-legged squats. You may or might not even get to this progression. If you do, just make sure that, that your athlete sits back into that hip. Do not let them bend the knee first. Okay, now we get into vertical jumps. So this one is all about the landing. Landing, and we talked about eccentric movement earlier. The landing is the key. See how he lands back into his hips like he's sitting into a chair? That's what you're looking for. Uh, the errors you're gonna see is they're gonna land on their toes, they're gonna land forward, they might even land falling backwards trying to land on their heels. It's really important that they stick the landing, so to speak, they land it with their hips. Okay, now we go lateral jumps. Now we're gonna take and throw all three things at them. We're going to talk about lateral mobility and how you stabilize in the lateral plane. So we're going to jump from one side, boom, and lock it in, lock it in, and stabilize. And he's going to use his hip to do that. You see this here? He lands, boom, his hip comes back immediately. That's how he's bracing himself. He's using his core and his pelvis. If he tries to land that stiff legged or use just his knee, he's going to get injured. So this skill carries over to sport big time. Okay, now we're going to talk about landing in different planes of motion. So now we're going to be jumping forwards, we're going to be jumping at an oblique angle, we're going to be jumping to the side on both legs. So again, eccentric training, hamstrings and hips, multiple planes of motion. Again, okay, so now they've done some stuff on the pitch, they've done their core stability work, and now we're going to go back and kind of do some more things that are going to kind of finalize the, ready, the readiness for practice in our game. This is simply just about a 75 to 80% sprint, about 40 meters up the pitch. Again, looking for proper alignment like we've been discussing all afternoon. It's a, it's a sprint, but it's about a 70% effort. Okay. So we're, we're, we're kind of getting our legs moving first, and then we're taking off. Okay. okay, then we're going to go to running bounding. Now we're going to get more explosive in the sagittal plane. So we're going to do a few, few steps, and then you're going to see him explode off of one leg, land it, and then jump onto the next one. Land, explode, land, explode. Again, looking to make sure that those knees and those hips and those ankles stay in one line as they do that. We've got one more. And then this, this is one of the most aggressive ones, planting and cutting, that's why it's at the end. So now we're gonna change directions. And this is where you're gonna see any flaws right away when they go to stop and change directions. And watch the gentleman on the left of the video, watch how poor his lateral hip stability is. He's only giving it a three quarter effort. He's not even going hard. He can't stabilize himself. So watch him. Here he comes. Oop, off. Oop, off again. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was fired. Remember, this video was done. I can't believe they didn't do this. That's terrible. That's how not to do it. Get two steps every time. That is an absolute failed exercise. If your athletes are doing that, they're not ready to do that yet or do it at a slower speed. And that's pretty much. The, the 15 exercises, now that seems like a lot because we did three variations of the core stability stuff. This only takes 20 minutes out there. Four game days, we're not doing that middle section at all. You're not doing the planking, you're not doing all that core work, you're not doing any of that in game day. The middle second section is completely out. It's only during practice. I think this program can help the endurance of the athletes so that we're not gonna be breaking all of our girls so quickly uh, I really like the idea of doing that hamstring exercise, especially when you have a, a single game on the weekend. There's not a big tournament. I think I, I would edit that one in. Yeah, do like three to five, the three to five rep one. I, I, I like that. I think the sooner we get these young girls uh, fit in their hips like they're supposed to be, uh, I really think you're going to see, if this takes hold like I want it to, I think you're going to see a, a, a ne the next several generations of athletes be so much fitter as they get to each level. Uh, you know, Abner is, is trying to develop talent. And you guys are supporting that by being wonderful coaches and giving your time to these athletes. So thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right.